Prime Watch UK. We actually had more than a thousand calls on last month's programme and some strong new information came in as a result. Detectives are particularly pleased with the information viewers came through with concerning the attack in West London in August. If you saw the programme, you'll remember a woman had been robbed and raped shortly after she arrived home from a shopping trip. In fact, six women gathered the courage to report that they had been attacked and raped in assaults which had similar characteristics. And as a result of all the new information that came in on that, a major investigation team has now been set up and we'll keep you up to date on its progress. There was another strong response last month, this time to the murder of George Leach, whose body was found covered in builder's lime. One piece of information may be so important that we've been asked to withhold all details about it, but in the light of it, detectives are very anxious to get one viewer to call again, the person who'd arranged to meet officers and in the end didn't turn up. If you were that person, you can call us here or you can contact the incident room on 071 403 3850. Well, now tonight, you could help provide the key to a tragic murder case if you recognise the voice on the tape recording you're about to hear. It's a 999 call to the emergency services made in the early hours of Monday, the 27th of September. You'll need to listen quite carefully. It's short and rather muddled. Well, here it is. Emergency, which service? Yeah, it's ambulance, please. Quick, straight away. It's a park tavern. Okay, just the line, It's please. a park tavern, London Road, Isworth. It's a caravan around the back. Well, now, shortly before that call was made, a robbery had taken place at a pub in Brentford in Middlesex, and a man lay dying. At the beginning of that weekend, on Friday the 24th of September, Caroline Walsh had flown to Ireland to attend a wedding. Trevor Thomas saw her off at Heathrow Airport. Trevor was the sort of person who wouldn't drop you off. He had to check you in, take you up to the boarding, hand you your boarding ticket and see you through, making sure you had everything with you. Oh, All right. Dear. Lord, I've forgotten the wedding present. No, you haven't. It's in your bag. Is it? Yes, in it my is. Case? Yes, it is. Are you sure? Yes. Uh, take care. My darling. Ring me as soon as you get there. I promise. Trevor and I spent very little time apart. And the minute we hit the airport, I knew already I was missing him. We've been together about four and a half years, and I know it sounds silly, but it was love at first sight. Trevor was the landlord of a pub a few miles away, as well as helping Caroline to run the Park Tavern in Brentford, where they both lived. Trevor was taking charge until Caroline's return on the Monday. You around tonight then? Yes, I am. You? Yeah, of course I am. Been let off the leash, have we? Always off the leash. Woof, woof. There we go. Not forgotten. Hiya, Matt. Hello, boys. Oh, hello. Uh, hello. Here's your potatoes. Uh, well, oh, well, thank you very much. By the way, Trip. I put you on a raffle. Thank you oh, very right. much. Trevor always Cheers, had a lot of time boys. for the older <laughs> customers in the pub. The he loved to sit down yeah, and he loved yeah. to chat to them and he always liked to do anything he could for them. On the house. Mm. That's it. Yeah, a good dog. Right, to get away from the pub, Caroline and Trevor sometimes stayed in a mobile home that they kept at the back of the park tavern. It's Sunday, the 26th of September. Are you pulling his strings? Yes. Oh, Blimey, get the drinks in, Jackie. Who are you? It's supposed to be one day off. Ron's pain. Those are the magic words. <laughs> what time should she get in? Four o'clock. But she'll miss the plane. She won't. She will. She, she will. will. Jackie, Caroline's on the phone to Trevor. Trevor? The couple have been speaking to each other twice a day on the phone. Hello? Yeah, I'm fine. No, no, usual crowd. <laughs> My last words to Trevor Sunday night. Just meet me at the airport and put those two big arms around me.
You look knackered. Why don't you go to bed? Oh, are you sure? Yeah, no problem. I'll grab a taxi. Oh, cheers. Night. Night. It would have been shortly before midnight when Trevor left the pub and retired to the mobile home for the night, presumably taking his keys with him. Nearly six hours later, a local man was passing the park tavern on his way to work. He saw a man he describes as stockily built beside a small dark coloured car. He noticed there was another man in the driver's seat. Then 20 minutes later and two miles away. I was driving in Spring Grove Crescent and I noticed a fella using a telephone. And I thought to myself, blimey, he's, he's out early. Emergency, which service? Yeah, it's ambulance, please. Quick, straight away. Is there a park tavern? Yeah, just follow the line. It's a park tavern, London Road, Isworth. Is it going around the back? He was about 5'8", um, about 28 to 30 years old, with sort of dirty blonde hair. You know, he got into um, the passenger side of a dark-coloured small hatchback and they drove off in the direction of Isworth. A few minutes later, the phone started ringing. Being a bit nosy, I, I was going to get out and answer it, but um, I didn't sort of bother and it stopped ringing, so... I then just carried on. In fact, it was the emergency services checking to see if the call was genuine. Soon afterwards, the police checked the park tavern, but didn't see anything unusual. I trotted into work about quarter to 10 to 11, as normal. And uh, I went through to the bar to open up. And as I was walking, I, I noticed that the safe was wide open. And this was uh, very unusual. Trevor? Normally, things would have been cleared away, but there was, Trevor? it was in a kind of disarray. And uh, there was just a feel about the place. And I was very nervous. I didn't know what had happened or, or anything like that. And I just thought, I've, I've got to get out of here. And uh, that's when I went through the door to phone the police. Why is that light on? Be careful. Oh, my God, it's Trevor. Trevor had been bound and gagged so tightly that he had died from asphyxiation. At the airport, I was met by um, a CID and told what had happened. Excuse me, sorry. Are you carrying my mom? Yes! I'm Detective Constable Sheena Hughes. May I have a word with you in private, please? What is it? My first reaction was, it couldn't happen to me. This sort of thing doesn't happen to ordinary people. And then it set in that, yes, it has happened to me. And what it's done to me and my family and Trevor's family and all I can say is, if there's anybody out there that knows anything at all, please, for the sake of us, and for Trevor's mother, father, and family, please come forward. Well, Mr Hemming, so far you believe that robbery was the intended crime rather than murder, do you? I think it was a robbery that went badly wrong. Trevor would have always had those keys with him. I believe he was surprised in that caravan at the back of the pub. He was tied up tightly, beaten, and then they robbed the safe in the pub. He was a friendly, outgoing sort of chap. I think someone probably knew his movements and someone knew he was going to be in that van, so there may be some inside information here. He ran another pub as well, didn't he? Yes, he, he had a part ownership in a pub down in Hounslow called the Royal Albion. Now, your most important clue by far, of course, is that voice on the tape, so we'll listen to it one more time. It's very short. Emergency, which service? Yeah, it's ambulance, please. Quick, straight away. Is there a park tavern? Yeah, just follow the line, please. It's a park tavern, London Road, Isworth. There's a caravan around the back. How sure are you that that voice is one of Trevor's attackers? Oh, I'm, I'm sure that it is one of the attackers. There's a lot of panic in the voice there. I think he maybe had a fit of compassion, maybe cold feet, but he was trying to alert the ambulance service. Do you believe this is the man the taxi driver saw? Yes, I believe after that he got into this small black hatchback car, being driven by another chap, drove off towards Isleworth. 
Where was it the taxi driver saw him exactly? It was Spring Grove Road, down, it's about two miles away from the pub. And the fact that there was a hatchback car involved could tie in very nicely with the sighting that were um, about what, 5.40 outside the yes, pub. Yes, about ten minutes before the phone call outside the pub, same similar sort of black hatchback with a chap walking alongside it. He was described as about, uh, well, a stocky build with a black duffel coat on. And the chap down at the phone box, he's been described as about 30 years old, dirty blonde hair, perhaps mousy hair, um, and about, say, 5 foot 8, 30 years old. And what was missing from the safe? Quite a substantial amount of cash and some jewellery. I've got two items here which are identical to items stolen. I'd like to show it to the viewers. Um, we've got a, a, a gold bangle. It's got seven stones in the bangle. Um, it's quite distinctive, an identical one of that was stolen. And a, a locket. Um, it's similar locket to this. It hasn't got the, uh, the scrolling on it, but uh, sorry, the uh, initials on it, but the same sort of scrolling. Mm. If anyone's been offered this sort of jewellery, indeed any other jewellery, and anyone can recognise that voice, I'd be very grateful if they ring us. Right, there's a substantial reward. So yes. that voice, as you said, is very important, vital. If you can recognise that voice, we'll play it one more time. Emergency, which service? Yeah, it's ambulance, please. Quick, straight away. Is there a park tavern? Okay, just the line, please. a park tavern, London Road, Isworth. It's a caravan around the back. Well, if you think you know who that might be, if you can help in any way, please ring. 0500 600 600 is the number here, or you can call the Incident Room in Staines, and that's 0784 446821. That's 0784, the code for Staines, 446821. Well, now to Photocall, our monthly portrait of wanted people and of offenders caught on camera. Here are Detective Constable Jackie Hames and Superintendent David Hatcher to take us through them. Does this man look familiar? He was captured on camera in Sussex using a stolen credit card. At 2 a.m. on September the 5th in Bath, two men were stopped in this street by an armed man who took their credit cards and cash. A few hours later, one of the credit cards was being used at the Heston Services on the M4. Later that morning, the card turned up in Brighton. It was shortly after 11 a.m. when this man was using it at the Sussex Square service station in Eastern Road. However, staff became suspicious and confiscated the card. He's around six foot tall with a medium build and very short brown hair. He was wearing a baseball cap and baggy blue jeans. If you recognise him, please ring us now. This man is Owen Gordon Davis and we need your help to find him as he's sought in connection with the brutal murder of James Alexander. Mr Alexander's body was found at his home in Aspen Grove in Belsize Park, London. He'd been battered to death sometime between Friday the 20th and Tuesday the 24th of August when his body was discovered. Owen Gordon Davis is 30 and about 5 foot 8. He was born in Australia but holds a British passport. He has a slight Australian accent and occasionally has a mild stutter. He also speaks fluent French. We know that three months ago he had a badly injured right arm. He also travels around, so you might have seen him at an airport, ferry or bus station. If you can help us find him, please ring. Over the last three weeks, this man has been busy visiting building societies in towns around Leicester. Do you know him? The first we see of him is when he robbed the Leeds Building Society in Loughborough on Monday the 11th of October. Four days later, still armed, his target was the Alliance and Leicester in Market Harborough. Finally, he robbed the Alliance and Leicester Building Society in Nuneaton. Again, he's armed with a small gun and carrying plastic bags for the money. This was just a fortnight ago at 3.45pm on Monday the 25th of October. He's in his mid-30s and 5 foot 8. If you know who he is, please ring. If you run a small hotel or guest house, you may have come across this man, John Ronald Robson. Colleagues from four forces would like to speak to him about a series of thefts and deceptions. Over the last two months, in Bristol, Wiltshire and Kent, a man has befriended several women, then duped them out of substantial amounts of cash and property before disappearing. John Robson is 35, 5 foot 8 and has a Geordie accent. He has a number of tattoos including NFC on his right arm and Sherl and John on his left hand. He often talks about football and uses the aliases John Niven and McPhillips. If you know where he is or you can help with any of our other photocall faces, please call us now. And the number to ring 0500 600 600. The lines are open now and it's 0500 600 600. And you may remember seeing these two people in the newspapers last month. These are impressions of the two men who rammed a woman's car on the M25. 
The attack on Mrs. Mina Mullins made the news when she was robbed of her jewellery and her car. They'd actually followed her for some 20 miles after she left an expensive London hotel. Now, the two are described as looking very like each other, both of them in their early 20s, of Asian appearance, slim to medium build, and with Cockney accents. And you can see the man on the right has distinctive green writing on the back of his jacket. They'd stolen this Saab, which has now been returned to its rightful owner, but somebody watching tonight just may have seen it being taken from Fitzgeorge Street near the Dorchester Hotel on the evening of Saturday the 16th of October. And tonight we can tell you something new about the case. On October the 24th, exactly one week after the robbery, Mrs Mullins burnt out Mercedes, it was a 500 SL convertible, it was discovered underneath the Hayes Bypass in Middlesex. It was actually on a pedestrian pathway, so if you saw it being driven down there, you'll certainly remember it, and we need to hear from you. Did you see her car, registration number MDM634, during the week between the robbery and the discovery in the bypass? Do you know where it might have been kept in that time? And have you been offered any of the jewellery? It was a gold Bertolucci watch, a diamond ring, and a gold and diamond necklace. If you can help, you can call us here on our studio number 0500 600 600 or ring the incident room direct, and that's 0932 84 55 44. That's 0932, the code for Adelstone, 85, 84, sorry, 55 44. Most men who get involved with crime grow out of it and settle down. But in our next case, two of the offenders, both highly dangerous men, are about 50, maybe even older. They showed a cruelty and a lack of control which their family and friends may well have noticed and which may prompt calls from neighbours and acquaintances tonight. There's a reward out for them and police are anxious to catch them before they kill someone. Two victims would like to see them caught as well. One was shot in cold blood. The other was set up by them to look as though he'd done it. Yeah, this is the van and right, boss. He's up there, six floors up. Monday the 23rd of August, and police in Birmingham had an intriguing problem. Why would a builder use a van with his own registration plate unchanged for a violent robbery a few streets from where he lived? And why did a blue van have a white twin? Look, uh, I don't know why you're questioning me. Well, what it is, so this evening we found the getaway vehicle. And once our local boys checked it all over, we found there was all sorts of building gear inside. Yeah, what sort of gear? Paintings, ladders. No, there's loads of builders around here, mate. I don't know what's got to do with my van. Well, you see, sir, although the van used in the raid was a different colour to your van, it did have the same registration number. RUK 78Y. You are? What's going on? Look, sir, you'll have to tell us exactly where you were today. Two weeks earlier, in Bermondsey, South London, One here, mate? Yeah, I'm interested in a van here. A friend of mine's starting his own business. Oh, yeah. Well, ideal, innit? Plenty of room. Good little runner. 295 you're asking for. 295, that's right. I'll give you 260 cash now. Cash now. Now. You must have caught me on a good day. Come in the office, we'll do the paperwork, eh? All right, mate. Uh, who do I make the invoice out to? Oh, you can put my name and address. The buyer gave a false name yeah. and address. Follow me, son. The van was taken across the River Thames, and quite by chance, its movements were noted down by a police surveillance team. But they didn't see what happened next, the mugging of a Japanese student in North London, and the theft of most of his important possessions. This was at 10 to 6 on Wednesday evening, the 18th of August. If this mugging was down to you, call us straight away. You need to clear your name of a cold-blooded shooting. Five days later, and over 100 miles away in Birmingham. All right. Hello, Sandra. Not working in the shop today? Well, I am. I'm in the office today. Paperwork day. Oh, goodness me. Oh, Never mind. Yes, I'll see, see you see you soon. Oh. Ta-da. What were you cups office? Oh, cheers, love. I was just about to make one myself. A post office vehicle arrived at the delivery area above Castlevale Shopping Centre at about half past eleven. Hey, hang on, this van looks a bit suspect to me. I thought we'd just hang on and just you know, have a look a bit first. 
we sat there for about a minute and looked at the van. The block was middle-aged. The way he was dressed convinced me that he was uh, just delivering to a premises or something like that. I think it's all right. Yeah. All right, then. The blue van now bore different plates from London, the same number as the white van owned by the builder half a mile away. On the edge of his estate, and just around the block from where the shooting had taken place, is Hawker Drive, where a family had parked their car. My wife wanted to go shopping at the shops in Castlevale, and it was about half eleven. We'd been sitting there for about 15 minutes. Back in a few minutes. And all of a sudden, this, this dark blue escort van drives into the cul-de-sac parks up slightly behind as our car to the left and immediately sort of took notice of it because it was going quite quickly and all of a sudden three men got out of the van and ran off one of the men was carrying something under his arm it was about two feet in length I keep on thinking you know that there was no need really to shoot me because I'd let go of the case straight away as soon as I seen the gun anyway he knew he must have known that I'd let go of the money they're just going to get what they want, and no matter who gets hurt. Meanwhile, in Hawker Drive, the witness saw a blue cavalier. Could that have been you? Then, half an hour later, about 12 miles away... I think it's in here. As we got along Shaft Lane, car. the noise got louder and louder. I, I thought it sounded like a car alarm going off, uh, as there sometimes has been cars dumped in the field. Uh, so I went in to have a look, but there was no car. All I could see was what looked like to be a petrol tank underneath the tree. The cash box was now empty. Radio WN News, it's 11 minutes past six. Hello? Do you give me the police, please? Uh, I'm ringing about the Castlevale robbery. I've been listening to the news. They was talking about a blue van. Well, there is a blue van outside my house and I've been to have a look at it and the, the windows are down, the door is open and I have taken the registration number. Whether it will be any help to you, I don't know, but this is the number, RUK 78Y. Okay, Dave. Yes, Delta 2, I'm in Hawker Drive now. Romeo Uniform Kilo, 7-8 Yankee. That's registered to a local resident who lives not far from here. I'm with the pickup now. We'll bring it in for Socco. There's some painting and decorating gear in the back, over. Thank you, Mike. Calling Echo Tango, 1-1. One, one. Just to make it abundantly clear, that builder and decorator is entirely innocent of this. Um, he was just sort of stitched up for it, wasn't he? Yes, Nick, we've eliminated him from our inquiries. How is the security guard? Unfortunately, he's still off work sick uh, three months afterwards and he may not return to work again. So it was a pretty vicious attack on him. You've got at least a description of, of one of the gunmen, uh, I mean, a bit about the other one as well. I mean, both are about 50, late 40s, 50, maybe even a little older. That's correct. The one who actually uh, shot him, although both were armed, the one who shot him uh, was about 50 years of age, 5 foot 11, bald head, thin face. Uh, the other man is about five foot seven and more stocky built. We ought to say there's a ten thousand pounds reward for finding these people. I think you're still looking for witnesses too, aren't you, for, for the actual robbery and for the getaway itself? Yes, we are. We'd appeal to uh, anyone who's got any information. Uh, we've seen the, uh, the, the getaway. Uh, we'd appeal for anyone who saw, saw anything to come forward. We're particularly interested in the, the location of the van between the 18th of August and the 23rd of August between the London robbery 
and the Birmingham robbery. Now, you think that that was in London from the 12th of August, and I know you're pretty sure it was there till the 20th of August, though you don't want to say why. Yes, we know, uh, we believe that it was in London until the 20th. Now, whoever used that van in London, it's pretty unlikely, frankly, to ring you up and say, uh, hello, Mr. Barrows, it was me that uh, did that mugging. But you desperately want to get in touch with them. Yes, we do. We desperately want to get in touch with them. We can't give them immunity, but there are ways that they can contact us uh, without divulging their, their identity. Uh, and, uh, if they can give us some identifying features of the van, which will show that, that they are the people, then we would appreciate that as well. All right. Only other two things to say very, very briefly. If you made up, and these are the false plates, RUK78Y, these are not... Uh, we were not worried about these in the white van where they're perfectly legit but if you made up these plates please let us know and there's a board over here which was used capital glazing it says on it if you remember making that semicircular cut in the top left hand corner please call us straight away now if you have uh, any more information on this robbery the number here 0500 600 600 the call will cost you nothing but remember there's a ten thousand pound reward or you can contact the west midlands police at sutton coalfield on 021 322 6040 that's 021 the code of Birmingham, 322-6040. Well, all 40 of our lines are occupied at the moment. We're getting a lot of calls through. In fact, we've got a lot of names coming through, identifying the 999 emergency services caller. Ten different names we've got so far, so that's looking good. Viewers have produced three strong leads on photo call cases, so we'll be following those up. And I've just heard that uh, actually two of those ten names are the same, so that's going to look promising, and somebody will be checking that out immediately. And that's, that's it so far. All oh, right. If, um, if you're having problems incidentally getting, getting through, I'm sorry. We do seem to be pretty busy here today, and um, the, int the information is quite exciting, so I'm getting carried away. But uh, keep trying if you can't get through. The lines are open till midnight. And uh, at the incident desk now, once again, here are Detective Constable Jackie Hames and Superintendent David Hatcher. First, can you help us catch this man who was responsible for a vicious assault and abduction in Warwickshire? Around one o'clock on the afternoon of Monday, September the 13th, a woman working for a leisure firm was collecting money from gaming machines at the Green Man pub in Birmingham Road, Collis Hall. When she returned to her car, a man with a gun punched her, forced her into the passenger seat and then got behind the wheel himself and drove off. He drove her across the Coal End Bridge and along Litchfield Road to the junction with the A446. Around 15 minutes later, they arrived at a secluded spot in Wishaw Lane. He left her at the roadside and drove off in her car containing the safe. Later that day, her stolen red Vauxhall Nova, minus the money, was dumped in Chester Road, Erdington. Did you see it being abandoned? The woman's abductor is about 20, with light brown hair and prominent front teeth. He spoke with a Birmingham accent and was wearing a blue baseball cap, blue denim jacket and white Reebok trainers with a blue stripe. If you can help, please ring Warwickshire Police on 0203 643 one. That's 0203, the code for Coventry, 643 one. Next, a disturbing attack on staff at an old people's home in Northamptonshire. In the early hours of Wednesday 11th of August, three care assistants at the home in Queensway, Wellingborough, were confronted by two men. They were threatened with a baseball bat and a metal tube before being forced to open the safe. Both men are 35 to 40 and about 5 foot 10. This man had dark wavy hair and puffy eyes. Perhaps surprisingly, he was dressed in a pinstripe suit and wore a chunky gold watch and white cotton gloves. His accomplice wore a dark green balaclava, a fawn jacket and dark gloves. The men left the staff tied up and gagged and then escaped with cash, documents and jewellery belonging to the residents. It's not known whether a get -a -car, getaway car was waiting outside. If you can help with any information, please contact the police in Northamptonshire on 0933 440 That's 0933, the code for Wellingborough, 440 Were you shopping in Sheffield on Thursday the 7th of October? If so, you might have seen this man. At 5pm, as staff at the Potpourri Jewellers in Eccles Hall Road were closing up, the man plus an accomplice persuaded the assistants to let them in for some last minute shopping. Once inside, they threatened the staff with this knife sharpener. They then ran out with four trays of antique rings.
Their getaway car, a B-registered maroon-coloured Ford Fiesta, was waiting nearby in Cowlishaw Road. Its driver, a woman, is thought to be Asian, with dark hair pulled back from her face. One of the robbers is in his late teens, five foot nine, stocky with dark hair. The other man, also white and in his late teens and five foot nine, is of medium build with light brown hair. Now he wore a green jacket and dark trousers. And if you're in the jewellery trade, you might have already been offered some of these stolen rings. They're antique with pearl, ruby, emerald and opal stones. If you can recognise the two men or identify the jewellery, please ring South Yorkshire Police on 0742 523 903. That's 0742, the code for Sheffield, 523 903. And our final case is one which you've no doubt read about and been horrified by. It's rare, yet it's the type of crime which strikes fear into the heart of every parent. On Saturday, 23rd of October, 15-year-old Amanda Millard left her home in Coesley, West Midlands, to feed some horses in a nearby field. It's something she did quite often. Shortly after she arrived at about 4.30, she was grabbed from behind, pushed to the ground and stabbed several times as she lay face down. The man ran off and Amanda staggered to a nearby house. Amanda's attacker is described as 18 to 20 years of age, around 5 foot 9, with a local accent. He was wearing a dark bomber jacket, dark jeans and a red crew neck t-shirt. The area where the attack happened is usually busy, with people walking their dogs by the canal. In fact, that afternoon a hockey match was being played only 100 yards away. Someone must have seen the man either before or after the attack. Her injuries were serious. One of the knife wounds grazed her heart, another punctured her lung. She's very lucky to be alive. Amanda's parents have made this appeal. Anybody? No, so it is. Their own parents, as hard as it may be, for God's sake, give him up before he... Somebody. The number to ring if you think you can help in any way is West Midlands Police on 021 200 2552. That's 021, the code for Birmingham, 200 2552. And of course you can phone us here on our studio number. That's 0500 600 600. 0500 600 600. The murder of the publican in Brentford in West London, uh, what the detectives call a surprisingly good response, high, high level response with lots more names coming in as well as the ones that uh, had duplicated before. Fair to call the credit card fraudster names coming in on that but there's a very strong lead. The Midlands robber, two names have suggested on the M25 car hijack incidentally, uh, two brothers have been suggested and they're quite interested in that. Our next reconstruction is an unusual one for Crime Watch. It isn't an appeal for witnesses, for almost certainly there are none. It's straightforwardly to get a name. When you get a hint of what this man's victims have had to go through, you'll understand the urgency in finding him. Someone must recognise the features and the behaviour of a man in his late 40s or his 50s who's involved in sex attacks. Our reconstruction starts in the town centre of Wimbledon, southwest of London just after midnight on a Sunday seven months ago, April the 4th. A waitress who just finished work was running for her bus home. <sighs> Shit! I was thinking about going to the station to get a black cab or phoning for, for a minicab. I didn't like to wait around 20 minutes at that time for a bus. It was then that I saw the man who raped me. He, he, he was, um, he was walking towards the bus stop on the other side of the road. I, I crossed the road and went to the payphone then dialed 192 to, to find out a number for a minicab. Directory, which town please? He, he said to me, kiss me. and make it look like you're enjoying it. So that if anyone walks past, 
then they won't be suspicious. And then he told me not to scream or struggle. Because if I did, if I attracted anyone's attention, he would kill me. The victim was marched across Warple Road towards the Sainsbury's car park. There was no one else around. Her ordeal in the deserted car park lasted almost an hour and a half. She was then tied up with tape and left there. How about these, I send? No, they're more rounded. OK, let's make them rounder. These. Yeah, but they were a really piercing blue, um, sort of really intense. OK, well, I'll make a note of that and we can have a look at it later. OK. Anything else you're not happy with? Uh, yeah, the, the mouth might be a bit wider. OK, let's have a look at the mouth. OK, we're going to make the mouth wider. Wider. OK. Wider. Yeah. OK, gents, here he is. He's 45 to 55, about six foot tall, medium build, but quite fit looking. He's got short, grey-brown hair and really piercing blue eyes. We know he smoked and we know he made reference to prostitutes, saying he was never satisfied by them. The rest we're keeping to ourselves for now. Leaflets were distributed throughout the area but nothing much resulted, and the inquiry lost momentum. Then, five months later... Good God. Yeah, there's a link from the lab work, a really strong link. Your guy did the same thing in 1991 in Clapham. We didn't get anyone for it, though. The rape had happened here. The victim was aged 72. In the Clapham offence, he'd broken into the house either during the night or in the very early hours of the morning by carefully removing a pane of glass from one of the rear patio doors, which to us, it suggests he may already have been an accomplished burglar. We think he was looking for the women that lived in that house at the time, but all of them were away at the time. Um, we feel that the lady that was eventually raped wasn't his intended victim. She, in fact, had just come round to feed the neighbour's cat. The scenes of crimes photographs give us a further insight into the very disturbing character that really we're looking at today. If you can notice that all the photographs um, that are laid out on the bed are face down. A lot of the women's clothing from the house has been laid out almost as if someone was wearing them. But most disturbing of all is the message that he wrote in lipstick and the words that he's underlined leave us in no doubt whatsoever as to his intention. Statements show the two attacks had many underlying similarities. The most striking details have not till now been released. They're so intimate, yet so identifiable that surely they'll be recognised by sexual partners or maybe other victims. At the Wimbledon offence, when he raped Emma, um, one of the particularly strange characteristics that this chap had was that he was wearing women's underwear. He was wearing uh, women's knickers, um, stockings and suspenders, which is obviously very peculiar. In addition to that, he had completely shaved pubic hair. He had no pubic hair. It appeared that he'd shaved it off. Um, and also, uh, the victim noticed a very distinctive scar on his stomach. Um, it ran almost vertically from his navel up to just under his rib cage on his right-hand side. Chef Himes, who in particular are you appealing to tonight? Well, one of our main appeals has to be for other victims. We feel it very likely that he raped someone before the 1991 offence and perhaps between the two offences of 1991 and 93. So anyone who may possibly have been too scared or frightened to come forward before now, we'd appeal tonight to come and speak to us. Now, this victim, Emma, as you, you called her, that's not a real name. Even after this terrible assault at knife point, the most terrifying thing, even then, when she, she managed to struggle up from the, from the car park, didn't call the police, she went home, uh, and her family eventually called the police uh, uh, on her behalf. I mean, it, it's so difficult for, for many women, after an, uh, something like that,
to call the police, let alone if they've put this behind them, if this happened months or years ago. It's going to be very hard for them to call you. It is going to be very hard. I mean, everyone accepts that. Um, but the offences are particularly violent. We know it takes a lot of courage to come forward. And people, as you say, may have tried to put it behind them. But this man is so violent that we really need everybody's help in the strictest confidence to come forward to solve that. And of course, there are other sorts of people who might know about these intimate details we were hearing, he's shaving his pubic hair and all the rest, liking to wear women's clothing, this distinctive scar going from here down to, down to his navel. Apart from, of course, the surgeon who might have done that, noticed a patient who had shaved his pubic hair or can fit other details together. Prostitutes, girlfriends, a wife maybe. That's really what we need tonight. We need someone that can put all the pieces together, not just the description and the e-fit, but the scar, his uh, propensity to wear women's underwear, all these pieces to put together. And we understand that that may be someone extremely close to him. Now, the physical description people would know about this man, I mean, he, he's tall, about six foot, isn't he? He is, yes. Uh, he's about 45 to 55. Um, he's got very distinctive piercing blue eyes, um, grey hair with bits of brown in it, and he was wearing a long woolen trench coat, which was dark grey and had white flecks in it. OK, he put on a turquoise baseball cap after committing the rape, which perhaps uh, someone might recognise or might have, might have seen him on in the early hours of Sunday, April the 4th. And as you say, he was wearing this, this trench coat at the time of the attack it, itself. Now, the other piece of clothing that's important is this. This is uh, similar, in fact, it's identical to a blue sun jacket that was stolen from the victim. Aviatic, it says, but aviatic outdoor. Now, why is this important? I mean, this is a replica, this isn't the one that it was is, stolen. No, the I one mean, that's stolen and missing. That's right. Well, I mean, our appeal this evening is, where is that jacket? It's, it's an unusual jacket, it's an aviatic puffer jacket, and they came up very small in size. And the manufacturers say that a lot of them, bought by men, were actually eventually given to, to women. And so it's probably too small for him. Where is that jacket now? OK. Maybe it's superfluous to say this, but there's a uh, £5,000 reward on this case. If there's any way that you can help, however unsure you are, however embarrassing it is to speak about, no one else must be allowed to be attacked by this man. Do please call 0500 600 600 here in the studio. The call will cost you nothing, 0500 600 600, or you can call the Instant Room in Wimbledon on 081 947 1212. You can ask to speak to a woman if you prefer, 081 947 1212. Do please help catch this man. Well, detectives will be acting on the information as it comes in throughout the rest of the night, so if you're wavering, please do just call. And sometimes it's the trivial-sounding details that turn out to be the most important. We'll be back with the Crime Watch update at a quarter past eleven, immediately after question time. If you can't stay up till then, please rest assured the crimes we've shown, firstly, are very isolated ones. Secondly, with luck, they're now on the way to being solved. So don't have nightmares, please. Sleep well. Good night. Good night.